Happy birthday. X-Men. X-Men. What else do we have to say? That's it. That's happy it. birthday, X-Men. We'd like to introduce this segment with a big happy birthday to the X-Men. Is that, did I say that right? Yeah. The all, all right. new, all different X-Men. Yeah. I for, see, all new, all different it's a X-Men. Belated, it's a belated birthday. Uh, sorry about that, Did you Marvel. get them a gift? No, just, maybe I should start okay. describing it. Well, yeah, I did. I, I, I have. The, I, I he purchased the their product. I purchased their product. That's right. But I was reading in the new Price Guide book that the X- Uncanny X-Men, or the all-new, all-different X-Men, just turned 40. In May of 1975, they came out with the giant size X-Men number, number one, one. which has a classic story, which introduces the new X-Men characters, such as Storm, Wolverine, Colossus, Thunderbird, and Grogan's favorite, Wolverine, joins the team. And they're there to rescue... Nightcrawler, too. And Nightcrawler to rescue. And there's a whole host of other Banshee. one-shots. Well, he wasn't new. Yeah, Banshee yeah, was in there. New. He wasn't new, Yeah, though. but he's not new. And yeah. Sunfire made an appearance. Yeah. But they're there to save the original X-Men. Well, that was the beginning point of leaving the old X-Men to the new X-Men. And they said, in this article in the back of the book, of the price guide, she makes reference to a lot of popular characters came out of there. She mentioned Colossus... Nightcrawler, Thunderbird, and Storm. I would like to add Wolverine to that list, even though he's made an appearance in Incredible Hulk. But it wasn't, you know, his first appearance. But I think the X-Men is the one that really took him off to the next level of popularity. I mean, all these characters, uh, Colossus, Nightcrawler, Wolverine, and Storm, they all had miniseries. I mean, I love that Frank Miller, uh, Chris Claremont, Wolverine one. Well, you were talking about the Wolverine, but Catapult, and remember, when he was in the Hulk, he was not set up to be a good guy. Yep. So you're absolutely right. When he was in X-Men, he's a good guy now. So you're absolutely right. You and catapulted he really him. built that character up, because he always had that tough guy, and over the years, he's kind of mellowed out a little bit. He has a good they, Well, that's yeah, the nice part about, about having yeah. a team dynamic. You can have all the different characters and, you know, play off of each other. So you get that kind of... When you have a team book you can do so much more with it instead of just focus on one guy or one character and one point of view agreed and then when you had thunderbird even though thunderbird died early he died like the first adventure or maybe the second adventure he died on the island he was coming off of a plane i think he was flying and the issues he had but they brought his son into future issues they even brought thunderbird back in a couple other futuristic stories that you know different continuity and timelines and and things along that line. So I'm just wondering, who are some of your favorite X-Men? Go for oh, sure. me. Oh, geez. Um, I've always liked the Angel, um, just simply because he, he was cool. He had wings. He could fly. I always thought that was a pretty neat power. I, li- I did like when they turned him into Archangel. That was cool. You know, was gave him more house. powers besides just being able to fly and punch the people. wings. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. Um well, how about when they gave him another mutant power? Do you remember when they gave him another mutant power on top of his ability I didn't to fly? Know that. No. He has the ability to heal. Oh, wow. Others. I didn't know that. Oh, others. His oh. others. Hmm. That happened. I dare Was say. Apocalypse. No. 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 Uh, this is after he became like the regular angel. Yeah. He had okay. The white wings. Um, yeah. They they made him have a secondary mutant power, kind of like uh, Emma Frost. She can turn her body into diamond. diamond hardness. Yeah. They gave him a second one, and he had the power to heal. I'm not crazy about that. See, I, I, yeah, I didn't like that either. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't. It's very too convenient. Well, let's yeah, give especially this guy a second especially power. a character that's been around for so long to not develop it. And all right. of a sudden, you know, I mean, when they did the thing with Apocalypse, that was. That was great because he that's got what he did. DNA. You know, he yeah he changed him, and that's what Apocalypse. One of the things he does. He's famous for it, um, which we'll know. see soon. I, I don't know. There's there is a whole lot of X Men characters that I I, I do like though. Um, Nightcrawler's always been one of my favorites. Um, do you remember the because... miniseries where he's a pirate? Yes. Oh yeah, that's great. Kitty yeah, Pride, cool. yeah, yes. heck the yeah, band. Swashbuckler. Yeah, I that's great. That. If you don't uh, if you didn't read it, get it. It's a good stuff. Um, but it's yeah, Nightcrawler. Stuff. He's really good. But a lot of that had to do with also his relationship with Wolverine. Um, how they were friends and they were pretty much polar opposites is when it came I as like far that. that was a great dynamic that they played off of and each stuff. other Wolverine wasn't afraid to, to hurt or kill somebody and, and you know Nightcrawler just was not not going to happen I also like so. his relationship with Kitty Wolverine and Kitty they played yeah. off of that you know yeah. father daughter type scenario yeah. yes yeah. but there I mean there's so many good X-Men characters there really is um, but what makes a good character too in this case is how an, a writer can evolve that character because when Wolverine was first created those claws were telescopic 
they weren't into his hand. I remember reading an article, yeah. and it was actually a glove, so anybody could put it on the glove. So when they made the limited series, the first one, and they put them in Japan, that's when they started saying, yeah, we just can't have it as a glove, because that means if anybody gets the glove, they become Wolverine. So they changed it up a bit. But that's the great thing about a great writer, can evolve a character, and all those changes that they made him ha being a man of honor, because he's big into the Japanese codes, but yet he can kill at a heartbeat. Those, you know, those polar opposites within one character made him an interesting, uh, you know, flawed character to read. Mike? <laughs> well, I'm, I was just pondering... Well, who's your favorite what, one, then? ...about some of the characters. I like several of the characters. Uh, Cyclops, before the recent stuff, I would say before Civil War, I like the old Cyclops. He had a little bit reasons. I, after he divorced Gene and got hooked up with the White Queen. I didn't like the direction they took him. I felt like they just disrespected the history of the character and what he did and just made something different. You know, I'd even be happy they said the White Queen was messing with his brain. And I, could be. I was yeah. waiting for the longest time for that to happen. And when and it, it never, never happened, did. it disappointed it didn't, me. It, it didn't bother me. me. Yeah. Um, I was just glad to get off the Gene Scott roller coaster ride. Yeah, exactly. Uh, at died, that point, it was done. Yeah. You, you know make, what I mean? You make a decision. If they're going to get married, then have them get married. If you're not going to have them, then, then let it be done. But don't do the on-off thing. That's so and, irritating. Yeah. yeah, but with 20 years of storyline, you, you somehow have to come across well, yeah. and change and say, okay, they're going to be in love. They're going to break up because their relationship I is thought just it was, like anybody's. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that it was the White Queen. Right. Uh, out of yeah. all the characters they could have hooked him her. up with, it was her. Or Madeline Pryor. Well, they, yeah. <laughs> the Goblin yeah. Queen. Yeah, you can't forget, if you're yeah. going to talk history, you can't forget yeah, the Goblin Queen. Yeah, but I thought, just thought it was interesting that it would be, you know, the White Queen. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Some but, of the, the other, speaking of the White Queen, one of my other favorite heroes of the X-Men is Iceman. And oh, one yeah. of my favorite issues is when Iceman, something happens to Iceman and the White Queen goes into his head. Gets in his and head. And she says, you don't realize how powerful you are. And yeah. it's just, they already were building up Iceman, and now she goes ahead. And, and does uh, all kinds of things that he never that, was so. able to do. Isn't that when he started icing up, he had spikes now? Yeah, yeah like spikes, doing yeah. some of the different Yeah, he could do all can... kinds of different hey, things. He's well, never elemental. figured it out. He's yeah. an elemental. Elementals, by all comic standards, are strong characters, are the mightiest characters. Swamp Thing, for one. Yeah. You know, going down your route, because you love the Swamp Thing. Once so, you have an elemental... You're in good shape. So now that the X-Men are 40, and we wow. told us some of the characters we, we like. We all knew all different X-Men yeah. are 40. Let us know who you like and why, and comment below, <laughs> and like the video on Facebook, and please subscribe to us. I think we <laughs> like know how to too. read off cue cards. <laughs> Thanks Our for watching. Our cameraman's great. Thank you. <laughs>